Fun game. Um, yeah, I told the guys in the locker room afterwards, the game really was a result of, you know, not just their effort and connectivity tonight, but uh, what they were willing to put into the last few days. You know, there was, uh, you know, some real conversation and reflection after Saturday's game as a team and individually, you know, amongst all of our players and staff. And, uh, you know, I think the difference between the good teams and the great teams is the great teams are able to come together after adversity um, and be closer even when they don't agree and even when there's conflict amongst guys on the team. And um, our guys did a great job tonight. Um, it was nine to three before anyone could even blink. Uh, Absmus came in and, you know, there's a reason he scored more points than anyone in college basketball. But uh, our guys didn't flinch. They kept playing. Our defense got better as the game went on. And I think the critical stretch for us was the end of the first half, the last, as we would say, the last round. We went into the last round up three. Zay Lowry gave us a real lift defensively. And then our guys made some, some huge shots to extend the lead. Shock, you mentioned Zaid. I think you guys had two skunks in the in the first half to kind of fuel those big runs. What did you see lock in defensively? Yeah, it's hard to get a skunk against a good team. I mean, that's the number 12 team in the country. And um, that's hard to do. Six stops in a row. So to get two uh, right there was, was big for us. That's how you extend the lead, obviously. Um, Chase Ross was, was a dude today. I mean, he... You know, we saw it last year when we played Baylor. <laughs> um, I think being from the state down there, there's an extra level of excitement and motivation that um, we as a staff have to learn to tap into every game. Because uh, I don't know if we'll have too many more teams on our schedule from that state, but he, he's a special player when he's like that. We've seen Tyler have plenty of big games here. How do you explain his ability to have his teammates kind of feed off his energy? Well, you know, I think the biggest thing, first thing before you even talk about energy is a mentality towards approaching the game and responding to the way you're defended. Um, you know, against Wisconsin, we, not just Tyler, we allowed them to go under a lot of our actions, a lot of our pick and rolls, handoffs, without really making them pay. And literally from our first possession on, Tyler said, no, you're not doing that. It's kind of... The last frontier right now, the teams are trying to utilize to guard him. They've tried every other way, and he's, I don't want to say he's mastered it, but he's hes pretty good about against really any other coverage. And now they're saying, hey, we'll go under and just live with it. But he can shoot too. So um, that was big, and, and he's a human being. So he gained energy from that. He gained confidence from that. And um, I thought he did a great job with um, – you know, who he was as a conductor for the rest of our guys. Uh, Shaka, you finished with 37 rebounds compared to Texas's 30. What would you like about your performance on the glass, and how do you think it helped you? I just want to. There was a level of effort. It's amazing when you have desperation as a, as a unit to go grab the ball, how much better you can be. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of things have probably been said or written about rebounding. But at the end of the day, it's not about what's said or written. It's about going and grabbing that ball. And I thought our guys had, had really good en energy and urgency on the glass. You know, the obvious storyline going again into this game was you going against your former team. Um, just just from your perspective, what, what was your emotions going? I saw you had a nice moment with Brock before the game. Yeah, it was, it was more – that was just kind of the strongest emotion. Um, is, you know, anytime it's rare, you go against someone that you used to coach. And I didn't coach him for one year. I coached him for three years. Um, and he redshirted. And, you know, he went through some, some challenging times when he wasn't playing. And then our last year together there at Texas, he really blossomed. Um, and he's continued to blossom. And he's been a part of a lot of winning an Elite Eight last year. Uh, conference cha multiple conference championships. Um, he's a winning guy. You know, he's a guy that he would thrive here. 
I can say that because he doesn't have any eligibility left, so I'm not trying to recruit him. But um, he, he he's a guy that uh, he plays for all the right reasons, and you know it's it's a lot of fun to see a guy that you've coached become what what he knew he could become. Uh, but it, it was just going to take some time. Uh, but other than that, you know, six great years at Texas. Um, grateful for all the people that I got to spend time with and be around there. Uh, but I'm an in the moment guy, and if you can't be in the moment here at Marquette in that arena uh, with this group of guys and this schedule and this opportunity that we have, then something's wrong with you. I noticed you had a AF written on your hand. Uh, could you talk about like what that is? Ah, uh, it's different messages on my hand sometimes. I used to put a plus sign on my hand to remind myself to be positive. But uh, it's just a reminder to me, you know, everybody has a, their kryptonite um, that they've got to make sure that they're aware of and, and stay away from. So this is just a message to myself for that. Uh, Tyler was just in here and he said that he told you that this one was for you, whether it had any kind of significance like yeah. that to you. What is it like to have your players kind of – Find well, kind of it was funny, you know, again, we spent a lot of time in conversation the last, you know, couple of days after after the Wisconsin game. And so I was in the office with uh, Oso and, and Tyler and I said, guys, don't worry about anything to do with me having coached at Texas. It doesn't, you know, don't worry about that. And they just looked at me and they're like, yeah, whatever. Um, so I pre you know, it's meaningful when people demonstrate genuine love and care and concern, um, you know, for their teammates or for their coaches. And again, that's the way we try to do it at Marquette and we're not perfect. And, um, you know, we still have work to go in terms of developing like ultimate trust across the board, but our guys really care about each other and they really care about us and we care about them. And that's a heck of a start. Shock, what's it like when you can have those weekly meetings with Tyler and Oso? Like, what's that the relationship like with them? Well, I learned learn from uh, one of my mentors, uh, Coach Raveling. Uh, he said, talk less and listen more. So, you know, when I get in there with those, especially with those guys, it's like, no, you guys talk. And they might ha not have anything to say, and I might have to ask them a question or a couple prompts, but um, there's some valuable stuff that comes out of I yeah, I learned – um, things about those two guys since the Wisconsin game that I didn't even know. And it, it's amazing. We always say on our staff, you know, everyone's an iceberg. You know, you see what's above the surface and you get to know that really well, but there's a lot of stuff below. And, uh, you know, I just appreciate our guys' willingness to spend time. I mean, today was – the majority of my day today was just individual time with guys. Um, and – I felt a little bit like, man, I need to watch more tape or I need to, you know, figure out other things X and O wise. But at the end of the day, if the guys are in a good place, then we're going to be fine. Shaka, you mentioned the moment and the opportunity, the schedule. As a coach, what's it like? You don't have to manufacture build up for these games. What's it like? The next one is big. The next one is big. The next one is big to so many people. It's great. I mean, our guys know the difference. Um, and at the same time, you, you have to respect 94, as we say. Um, shout out to my, my old friend, rest in peace, Augie Garrido from Texas. He taught me about that. But basically, have a level of respect for everything that goes into winning, regardless of who the opponent is. I mean, we beat Southern last week. They beat, you know, a good Mississippi State team the other day. So you don't want to take anyone for granted. But at the same time, our guys came to Marquette to play against teams like Texas Teams like Wisconsin, teams like Kansas, teams like Purdue, teams like Notre Dame, who we have next. And when you make this schedule, you know you're probably not going to go through it completely unfazed because it's just not necessarily realistic. Um, but you just want to grow from each game, and I, I love the way that our guys have been willing to do that. Thank you, guys.